Hi, I'm Gábor Nagy, Head of Product and Marketing. Welcome to learn about our products. In this talk, I'm going to introduce SkillMap, our solution for defining and assessing competencies. I am going to talk about what are skills and competencies, what is the bottleneck of competency management currently in organizations, the features of SkillMap, the implementation of SkillMap, and I will share some examples and talk about how to use the system. What are competencies? Well, here you see two academic definition of competencies. And the third definition is coming from human resource management, a combination of knowledge, skills, abilities, and other traits demonstrated in work behavior that determine job success. I like this definition because I think it includes everything about it. And if we want to be short, I would say job skills. I could explain competencies like this. Organizations have a reason for existence. They have a purpose. Usually it is defined as their mission. Usually they have a vision where they want to get, what they want to achieve. They have a strategy, how they want to achieve that. And they have business plans and they have objectives and key results areas and so on. Some kind of goal setting and performance management systems. To put it short, they want to get things done. And then they build an organization that supports to complete these things, to deliver these objectives. So the organization with its uh, business units, with its departments, with teams and so on. And the things that need to be done also divided, sorted into jobs, and roles that people need to fill in. And then we have the workforce, the people, the individuals who come to work. And organizations, they need to match people to the jobs and roles. And this matching can be accomplished by using competences. Competences create the common language, a language that describes the skill requirements of the jobs and the roles. And the same language can also describe the capabilities that the people have. So competences is a system to align the needs of the organization regarding to employee capabilities with the people, with the people's capabilities that they have or that they need to have and they need to develop. So competencies are a central concept in human resource management. The competency concept originates from the last century and by today almost every organization with a little bit size and maturity uses some form of competency-based human resource management. And even many smaller companies that are progressive also implementing it in some form. If competencies are implemented well, for example, by using skill map, then you have the descriptions of the critical job skills and you have the assessments, you have the ratings, the number, you have the data, you know what people are exactly capable. Then competencies have a major impact on most HR processes. Recruitment should be about job skills. The more the recruitment focuses on the job skills, the less biased and the less influenced by other things and biases. On the job training, learning and development should focus on building the critical job skills that is required for the success of today and tomorrow. Performance appraisals, of course, you want to look at the results, you want to look into the past, you want to see what has been delivered, what are the KPIs. At the same time, you also want to look at what enables an employee to deliver these results. 
varies deeply in the skill development journey. What are the skills that the employee needs to develop so the performance can be raised? And how the manager can support the employee in building those skills? And job skills, of course, play a role in compensation, in the career path planning for the employee, and from the viewpoint of the organization to create succession planning plans, to make internal selection decisions. The job skills play a major role. The job skill information should be the major data point to make these decisions. So organizations, they want to reap the benefits of these applications of competences and competency models. However, there are some challenges on the way. First of all, how to define these competences. We said it's a common language, it's a system. How to do this? Competency modeling is a challenge because there are no scientific standards of competency modeling. And the definitions that organizations use currently very often written in an abstract kind of social sciences style, and they don't connect to reality very often. The definitions are often too generic failing to address the critical real job specific skills. And many competency models I have seen are bulky, verbose, rigid, expensive and non-effective. So competency modeling has many challenges and between definition and applications there's also a crucial step that is very often overlooked that is the assessment. How are we going to assess the people on the competencies? How do we know where they are right now? And companies usually typically measure personality, aptitudes, motivation, even emotional intelligence maybe. They measure these because there are efficient tools to use that. However, they cover only a part of competencies. It's not the full picture. Job skills are the most important part of competences, but their assessment is expensive and usually non-complete. Current approaches are interviews, tests, 360 assessments, assessment centers. Now, tests would be a very straightforward way to measure job skills. The challenge here is that there are so many different job skills. And job skills can be also different by company. So to develop tests or finding tests that are really suitable and cover the skill well is not easy. Testing skills is a daunting task and most companies give it up maybe entirely or they test only a few skills that they happen to have some tests available. So the assessment of job skills are the greatest bottleneck in competency management. The reason for this challenge with assessment is partly due to the fact that competency modeling is done in separation from assessment. So competency modeling has its own methodology originating from job analysis and pioneered some consulting companies so there is a certain methodology, but this methodology is not optimized for assessing these competences. And once the competency modeling has been completed, then companies look at, okay, these are the competences, so how we are going to assess them. So assessment comes as a secondary thing or, or comes as the next step after the competency modeling have been completed. And the solution, an innovation of skill map, is to bring these two together. That competency modeling should be done in a way that at the same time an assessment is created automatically. With skill map, competency modeling and assessment are not separated anymore. Skill map is as much a tool for defining competencies as for assessing them. 
This innovation has been achieved through a range of small innovations. And the first one is creating a standard for defining competencies. So I mentioned there is no scientific standard. However, many competency modeling efforts and practices as pioneered by consulting companies have a lot of in common. So I built on the most common elements of defining competencies and created this structure which consists of a skill name, a definition which is brief, and then definition of the competency levels in five grades and optional development suggestions. And besides this standard structure, there's also another very important point that the skill map should not only focus on observable behaviors, but rather capture the key milestones on the skill development journey and should focus on the key experiences. We're focusing on key specific task experiences that facilitate a yes, I have done this or no, I haven't done this kind of evaluations. Another point here is that the language that we use should be concise and domain specific technical language is preferred wherever it's applicable. Now, of course, if the skill map is about the core skills that everybody in the company needs to perform, you define those skills with a language that everybody understands, of course. But when you get into specific jobs, then the skill map should capture the language of that job. It should be written by the people who understand the job very well because they are the people who know what are the key milestones on the skill development journey and the skill map should capture that. So for example, trainer skill. If you look at the description of the advanced level, creating own content modules, customizing exercises, delivering leadership development trainings for senior leaders, applying a wide range of theories and advanced methods, NLP, positive inquiry, action learning, role plays, video feedback, and so on. People who are not in the training might not understand this. Or when you look at the expert level definition, achieving excellent results on all Kirkpatrick 4 levels. Somebody maybe doesn't understand Kirkpatrick 4, but that also very clearly shows that he's not at that level. A skill map should be written by job experts to people who are in that field. And there are some further innovations. One is the assessment interface provides opportunity to choose these in-between levels. So actually we have only five levels defined, but because of this in-between levels or scale has nine possible outcomes. People can score from two to 10 in our case. So this provides higher resolution and this higher resolution is really needed because the gap between the different levels like beginner, intermediary, advanced, each gap is significant and there is a need to have an in-between level, an in-between stage for the people who clearly surpassed one level but they haven't fully reached the next level. Innovation 3. We are not only assessing the skill level but also the intrinsic motivation for performing tasks relevant to that skill. Innovation 4. We're also calculating these total scores. For example, skill total scores brings all the skill scores on a skill map. Skill map maybe consists 12 skills, 16 skills. So it brings together those scores into one score. And the same goes for the enjoyment total scores, which is the intrinsic motivation. And this one total score helps efficiently rank people, sort people. And innovation five, Skill map is built on the OD Tools platform, and the OD Tools platform has a range of personality, EQ, IQ, aptitudes, and other kind of tests. And 
Our platform has the competency map function and through that function you can integrate scores and results from all these different tests with skill map to generate a truly comprehensive competency profile and make personal decisions not only based on the current skill level of employees but also their potential. So here's an example of the assessment interface and you see all the parts are here. Here is the name of the skill, a brief definition of the skill and then the definitions for the levels. You see five levels defined. Then you see here the in-between choices so there are nine cho choices altogether and people also can write a remark if they have to if somehow our skill map would not reflect would not capture their skills accurately they can here add and here below they can select how much they enjoy performing the tasks related to this skill and this indicates their intrinsic motivation to these kind of tasks so, how to implement skill map? How to use skill map? First, you need to define the skills. We have an existing skill library, however, your skills might be different from that, and you can create them from scratch, or you can customize from the existing one. We call it clone from the existing ones. Two, there may be a couple of skills that are used very often together. For example, core skills that relate to the core values of the company or the so-called core skills that expected from everybody regardless of the position or you may have job families for example sales and people may sell different products through different channels but maybe there are some skills that you require from every salesperson regardless of their specific position so in that case you would also could make a job family skill set a skill set which is bundling a couple of skills that are used together very often for efficiency so you need to create skills and then you have the option to bundle them to create packages or sets that we call skill sets and three you create the skill maps you select the skills and the skill sets plus skills that you want to be included in the skill map and the skill map is the competency model for the job we recommend using 6 to 15 skills per job, however it's possible to add 4 to 18 skills into any skill map. You can adjust the sequence of the skills, the order that they show up on the assessment and the report. And then done! You can print out the skill maps as they are for discussions about competencies or you can go ahead and administer online assessments. You input or import the people, you select the skill map, you send out the links to them, etc. just by a few mouse clicks. And participants fill in these assessments in 10 to 15 minutes and then you can immediately generate reports. And besides individual reports, you can also generate group reports. And there is also the option to create competency maps where you combine skill maps with other psychometric tools like trait map, MQ, EQ SWOT and so on. So the reports you get. You can download the skill map workbook, which is not an assessment report, it's rather the report of the competency model. This is a PDF that can be also printed nicely and then it can be used to discuss about the competencies. It can be used in development one-to-ones, dialogues. It can be used as a learning material. And if you send out links inviting people to complete the assessment online, then you can generate their skill map assessment reports. You can use that in recruitment, in coaching, learning and development, training needs analysis, coaching discussions and so on. You can generate group reports for your entire team. This helps in skill gap analysis. You can see very clearly and you can compare individuals to each other. You can see the overview of the team. And you can export also all the data through Excel. 
and after the Excel export you can use Excel to generate other kind of reports or you can import this data into other kind of people analytics platforms and you can integrate skill map with psychometrics aptitude tests or other tests like personality and you can generate an integrated competency map so how does the usage process look like in a selection setting candidates they do the self-assessment you generate the individual the group report if you do the group report they can be very easily ranked and filtered and most importantly when you get to the interviews the interviews can be enhanced with the skill map report your interviews can become much more specific you know exactly what to ask your conversation with the candidate will be much more targeted relevant and because the skill map consists of observable behaviors and key experiences it is very easy to build on that and ask more behavioral event interview questions to make your interviews more insightful and valid and you can make better selection decisions based on data good data and when you use skill map for learning and development participants do the self-assessment you can analyze the results on a group level to inform any kind of training program design and participants can have a one-to-one -one development discussion with their manager or the HR manager participants can customize their own learning journey they can create their individual development plans and after a while after the learning activities you can repeat the assessment and you can track the progress people make and another option is to define development suggestions for each skill some resources some activities to be done and so on and this can be input into our skill description which will make the report even more useful because the learning resource is right there listed next to the result so let's look at a few examples for example in this fictional company ABC corporation it has been identified that the product managers need to have the following skills user insights the product manager must know the users product knowledge must know the product very well and the competing products defining the product the product manager needs to be able to come up with the product vision and the development roadmap managing the backlog these are making the tactical day-to-day -day decisions about what to develop what's not what is good enough where should be the priority what can wait abc corporation also has so-called core competencies these are behaviors that are expected from everyone in the company regardless of the position so abc has the core competencies of accountability adaptability leading self and teamwork and the product manager besides the specific product manager skills also requires some other skills from our generic skill library presentation skills and leadership skills have been identified as also crucial for the success in, the f in this position skill map is a tool to define competencies and also to assess competencies here we are looking at an assessment report of John Sample he has completed the skill map survey and here we see the results the blue bar shows the level of skills and the yellow bar shows the intrinsic motivation to perform tasks related to those skills so for example here we can see that for John Sample his highest skills are around the core competencies leading self, teamwork, also adaptability and presentation skills that's where he 
claims to be uh, very good at level 9 and he is uh, reaching level 8 for leadership yeah basically that's it and we can see also the relative weaknesses so accountability and managing the backlog these are the areas where the candidate has less amount of skills less amount of experience of course the report also contains all the explanations that you need to understand the graphs the radar chart provides an intuitive overview and also all the details while we have the total scores for skills and also for the enjoyment the intrinsic motivation for the relevant skills the report also contains the detailed definitions of the levels the grades of the competency so for example here we can see that uh, a grade 7 means that John Sample already has the experiences of grade 6 and has those uh, skills covered so for example in this case simulating or enacting various users and realistic use cases to experience the product acting on user feedback designing processes to capture user feedback conducting some form of user research accumulating qualitative or quantitative user data so he already has these and also has some from the grade 8 however he didn't reach it yet so his current level is somewhere in between and you can use this uh, on an interview to become very efficient to ask you know why did you uh, choose seven what are the ones that you have from from grade eight what are the ones that you have that you don't have yet and you can ask bi behavior event interview questions to verify his scores and the report offers the similar definitions for all the skills that are included in this particular skill map product knowledge defining the product and so on and the product also offers statistical data about the assessment so here we can see for example that the candidate started to fill in the assessment 30th of May 3.10 in the afternoon and completed it at 3.23 the test length was 11 minutes 19 seconds we see which block was the fastest which was the slowest and we get the median block length so this gives us an overview an impression of what was the process of filling in the skill map questionnaire let's look at another skill map report in this example we are going to see a competency model that was developed at this fictive ABC corporation for an HR generalist role this skill map includes some HR specific professional competencies operational expertise relationship management talent management organization development because it is an ABC corporation so they have the core competencies that is the same that what we saw in the product manager so accountability adaptability leading self and teamwork and some other generic skills have been also identified as crucial for success in this position in this case industry knowledge diversity and inclusion and communication here we see the radar chart with the results of this particular candidate we see the areas of strength we see where the where are the skill levels lower and we see also how is the motivation what are the tasks that uh, the person really likes to do wants to do and what are the ones that the candidate would like to minimize or avoid if possible and of course the report offers the details the detailed definitions of the competency grades 
which can be used for behavioral event interview questions. It can be used for performance discussions, for development discussions, for communication between employee and manager or employee and HR department. So let's see how it works in the system. After login, if you go to assessment tools, if you click it, then you will see skill maps and you can click skills and then you will see the skills that are built in in the system generic skill library so you will see these skills already populated there there are right now 34 so-called global skills which means that everybody in the system can see that because you can define skills that are limited to your organization so a skill let's say the first one accountability has certain properties a skill has a code has its name has its visibility the scope of use it has a short definition and then it has a definitions for the grade, for the skill level, for the competency level. The competencies in our system must be defined always at five grades. Beginner level, basic level, intermediate, advanced and expert levels. You can also record development suggestions, but this is optional. You can enter skills in multiple languages in our system. This is useful when you have users from different countries. Skills are the basic building blocks of the skill map. It is like a brick when you're building houses. You can use maximum 18 skills to create a skill map. So you can use maximum of 18 bricks to form a competency model for any job in your company. Of course, in real life, you will need skills that are not included in this library so you will need to input customized skills and also maybe the skill is here but in your company your definition the language that you are using is different so then in that case again you need to create a customized version of that skill i'm going to show you how to do that before entering the skills into the system you must already create them, you must al already write them. We recommend to do this work in Excel. We are providing the skill library template Excel file, which has this structure, which is helping you. So here you see that for a skill, we need a code, a skill name definition, and then the grade definitions. In this example, I'm going to create a new skill, digital communication skills. Let's suppose that we realize that for our product manager, digital communication skills are also very important. And the skill code is something that is helping me to know what I'm creating. So it makes sense to have some system when you create your skill codes because for example in export this is what you will see this is what will help you to to identify uh, the skill i'm going to create this skill in english and only in english for now so again here we have the name brief definition yeah and then the grade definitions now for beginner scale i'm always using a standard definition beginner slash low skill level for our practical purposes this simple definition works very well and then it saves time for you and also for the person who is filling in the questionnaire now if you have already an existing competency model then you have all the five grades then of course go ahead and use all the five so fill it in if you have only four then you need to find something you need to stretch them out for five and you have six grades that i haven't heard then you have to somehow compress them 
uh, back to 5. But we must have always 5. Why 5? Because uh, when we uh, want to have our competency model to work as an assessment, then higher resolution, resolution of 5, is needed, works much better. So using job analytics and competency modeling methods, I have created already this new skill, digital communication skills, ready to input into the system. So we are going to press add new skill and we are going to copy and paste the code and the name that we already have created. I will set visibility to restrict it to this organization. Now I can save it and with that we created the base of a new record. So here it is in our system, digital communication skills. We have created it and using the skill wizard, I can enter the information, the details. I can also delete a skill. As long as the skill is not used in other places, I can delete it or I can re-edit the basic information that we just entered, as you can see from here. So let's use the wizard. Select edit record. And here we can simply copy and paste the text that we prepared previously. I arranged the windows now, so this work can be a little bit more efficient. And for development suggestions, I just delete this placeholder, this code, because we are not going to input that. And I can save the skill. So the skill has been created. After creating the skills, the basic building blocks, we can go to skill sets and skill maps to use them. So let's see first skill set. Skill sets are optional, you don't have to use them. You can imagine a skill set as a module. So skill is a brick and a skill set would be like a complete bathroom that is assembled already, put together and you, you can use the whole thing and just punk, put it in the house. A skill set is a bundle of skills. If for any reason there are skills that you, you use uh, quite often together, for example, if you have core competencies, which is required from everyone in the company, then it makes sense to create a bundle, to create a module, so you can work with them more efficiently. You don't have to add them to every skill map individually. You have all the skills ni nicely in one bundle, one module, and you tech, you are going to just insert that into your skill map. Let's create a new skill set just to see how it works. So new skill set. This time I'm going to give just any kind of code because I'm going to delete this and the name will be product manager two and I will limit it to this organization. And let's see what skills I want to include here. Let's say these are for the product manager. So I will have defining product managing backlog, product knowledge, user insight. And I also want to have the digital communication skills that we just created to add it to the core product manager skills to create a skill set. So in the future, from any product manager, I will require all these. That's why I create a bundle. And you know, here I can adjust the sequence. So for example, I can put the digital communication skills to the first place 
so in the assessment and in the reports this will stay at the first place so when i'm happy with the content with the skills that i included into the skill set and i'm happy with the sequence of the skills in my skill set i can save it and with that we have created a skill set i'm going to delete this skill set because this was just an experiment an example i don't really need this and i want to keep it clean all right now so after demonstrating a little bit the functionality of skill sets let's go and create some skill maps as you see we have two skill maps currently in the system one is for an hr professional in abc corporation and one is for a product manager in the same company and for an example let's create another skill map for product manager that i will call abc product manager 2 so i enter a code test skill map and the name abc product manager v2 and i restrict the visibility to this organization and i save it with that we created the base record and then i can go to the magic wand and add some skill sets and some skills i'm going to choose abc core skills v2 skill set this has digital communication defining the product managing the backlog product knowledge user insights so so many critical professional skills here and i'm going to select also the abc core competences because these are core competencies required from everybody in the company this skill set includes accountability adaptability leading self and teamwork and i'm going to add some skills like building relationship business process improvement change advocate now just for uh, an example purpose and decision making all right after I selected the skill sets and the skills, I can arrange the sequence. Okay, skill sets, this is fine. And then skills, let's say I want decision making on the top. All right, and business process improvement, the second. Okay, now I'm happy with the content of the skill map and the sequence. I save it. And once I saved, Next to the skill map name, here we have a PDF download workbook icon and a pencil icon. So if I download the workbook, And this document contains the skill map that we just created. So here are the skill sets that we added and the other skills that we selected decision making business improvement and so on in the sequence we wanted and of course we have all the details so here i can review the skill map i can send it to my colleagues to make sure that everybody agrees yes this is the competency model we want for this position and using the pencil icon i can preview the assessment what will the candidate see exactly as the candidate go through our assessment so we'll see the instructions and then here come our skills the candidate can select can go through and so and so so here I can really check how the assessment will look like before I add the skill map to project and invite people to complete the assessment. And then I can create a project including the new skill map that we just created. And from here the operation is exactly the same as trait map or eq mq and so on 
Here I show you another project. This skill map has been already administered. A couple of people already completed the assessment. So this is how the interface looks. And I can go to reporting and I can generate the individual reports. We have seen how that works. Or I can generate the group report. with visual and numerical display and this shows an overview of participants so here is the total score for the skills total score for the intrinsic motivation and also visually it is very intuitive to see where are the people where are their strengths the larger disk shows higher skills Darker yellow shows more intrinsic motivation. So this enables you to compare individuals very easily and also to get an overview about the skill levels in your team or among your candidates. And this visual report gives you an intuitive overview and if you want to see the exact details then you can go to the numerical view. And that shows you the precise scores. And with that, I'm closing the introduction of the examples and the system use. So, this was the introduction of skill map. If you have any further questions, welcome to contact us. I wish you great experience with skill map. I want to thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoy this presentation. Thank you.